Amen. The Lord is good, isn't he? Hallelujah. I'm thankful to be a child of the King. How about you? Why don't we lift our hands and ask God to touch us tonight as we enter into his presence together. We love you, Lord Jesus. We thank you for your goodness and mercy. We thank you, Lord God, for your power, your victory in our life. Lord Jesus, we need you more than anything else. We ask, Lord God, as we enter into your presence, Jesus, that you would encourage us, uplift us. Lord Jesus, as we reach for you, that we would take a hold of your hand lead us and guide us. We thank you, Lord God. You're good to us. In Jesus' name we pray and everybody say amen. Amen. Hallelujah. That's right. Go ahead. Let's give the Lord a hand praise. Amen. Amen. Why don't you turn around, find two or three people, shake their hands, put a big smile on your face and let them know, say, I'm glad you're here. Where's everybody else? Tell them that. I'm glad you're here. Where's everybody else? My Lord.
Father, thank you for being our Savior, Lord. Thank you, Lord. 
You are the best father anybody ever had. We honor you and praise you today, God. We glorify you, Lord, for your presence in our life. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for being our everything. Is he your everything today? Amen. Praise God. He picked us up, turned us around, and put our feet on solid ground. You can't ask for anything more than that. We have a Savior. Amen. This world has its stuff, but we have a Savior. Amen. Praise God. We're going to go to that Savior in prayer right now. Uh, Caitlin Smith, she fractured her ankle this morning, and we want to keep her in prayer. They're going to set it tomorrow. Uh, Daniel and Michael Cupidon are both homesick. Their Les is back here. We'll pray through Les today for his sons, and we want God to touch them and heal them. Also, my grandsons are not feeling too well tonight, but we'll lift them up in prayer. We also want to keep uh, Brother Gregory in prayer. He's here tonight. He's got a biopsy this week, and we want that test to come back negative. In Jesus' name. Also, we want to keep the people of the Philippines in prayer. They're really going through it, and we want God's protection upon them all through the week and the days to come. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ, thank you for touching Sister Emsweiler, God. Heal her back, Lord. Hallelujah. Touch every vertebrae, every muscle. Hallelujah. I thank you for making her whole right now. We lift up Caitlin to you right now, God. Thank you for healing this ankle, God. Thank you for healing this ankle speedily. Touch Daniel and Michael Cupidon, God. Hallelujah. We command this infection to loose them and let them go this night. In Jesus' name. And we lift up Nathan, God, Marotta. God, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Heal him, God. Heal him, Lord. Heal him, God. Praise God. Lord, we lift up the people of the Philippines, God. All through this week, God, surround these people with your angels. Keep your hand upon them, your provision, God. Thank you for supplying all their needs, God, according to your riches and glory. We bless you tonight. We thank you tonight for the victories that we're going to hear, God. The miracle power is flowing right now. We thank you for it. We thank you for it. Hallelujah. Let's clap our hands unto him. Let's thank him. He's an awesome father. He's an awesome father. Let's lift him up right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We praise you, God. We praise you, Lord. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Praise God. of the Lord. Sweet, 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 sweet. Let's just lift our hands to him for a minute and just drink him in for a second. Just drink him in by loving him, praising him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just drink. Let's go to still waters right now. Let's go to the still, restful water. Thank you, Jesus. Let's do it without music for just a minute. In Jesus' name, don't stop praising. Let's just keep praying. As we move toward those still waters, so the Spirit can rest on us and give us spiritual rest. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hachaya mahosho tola mahaya mahashi. Holo lo bahakasi. Hokataya mahaya mahakasi. Oh. Oh, 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 oh. 
We need you to restore our souls, O oh God. Oh, everyone, have your eyes closed. Tilt your head toward heaven and just love him. And let your nervousness go. And let your tension go. And let your stress go. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. Yes. Sing it, please. I love him. Go for it, brother. sounds so beautiful. Together, all of us, just one more time. Ah. Get your spirit quiet by letting Jesus flow in. Let your emotions begin to just settle down. 
hallelujah. He leadeth me beside the still water. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Refresh yourself in me tonight as you lift yourself up before me. My spirit is moving deeply within your heart right now. The weariness, the anxiety, the worry, let them melt away in my presence. For I give you myself as you give yourself to me. If you really believe that was a voice of the Lord through the gifts of the Spirit, we need to give him a little bit more respect and thankfulness. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Help us to rest in you, God. Help us to rest in you. Jesus' name. You may be seated and God bless you. If you haven't met her and had a conversation, your life is not fulfilled. You're eight. And Nashami, am I saying it right? Nashami, I'm sorry. I always get my M's and my N's mixed up. You know, there's only one more line to differentiate between them. And the Shami has two goals that she has shared with me. Is that all right to share? Number one, she wants to preach tonight. And she's going to. And number two, she wants to be the first children's pastor at Christian Life Center. <laughs> what she wants us to do is to vote. She wants us to vote as whether she should be the next. Yeah. Actually, she wanted a box up here. Well, you don't have to do it right now. Maybe next Wednesday, Sunday, whatever is good with you, Pastor. <laughs> is that hilarious or what? All right, you ready to preach? All right. Want to? Huh? All right. Yeah. Well, that's okay. I just. So, um, first I, um, wait, sorry, um, to talk about the first, about something that happened in the first, I mean, 
in the first chapter of the Bible, which is Genesis. We all know Adam and Eve and how the devil tricked them into eating the apple. And that's how sin was created. But now we get baptized and get the Holy Ghost so we can stop sin in us and others too. So we can get people in our church and we can also get people from our schools, work, and even people that are next door or across the street or even in our neighborhood. tell them all about God and tell them why they should come here. And the best opportunity is Kid Zone's next Friendship Sunday. That's when we can get a lot of kids and their parents here. Because Because we all know that children that children's parents want to come with them to make sure they're okay. That's why Kids Own's next um, Friendship Sunday is the best opportunity to get a lot of people there. I mean, here. little thing and detail about this church is important. And that's why we need to get people here. And so we don't be like Adam and Eve. And we don't get tricked by the devil. That's why we don't get tricked by the devil. That's why we don't get tricked by the devil. That's why we don't get tricked by the devil. That's why we don't get tricked by the devil. That's why we don't get tricked by the devil. So I'm giving you homework that so that you so that you can go to work and tell them that money isn't important and tell them what really is important, what your life really means. Not all the money, making sure your house is nice, making sure you have a house. It's about Jesus Christ, the one and only Lord. Thank you for listening. That's what we're teaching our kids. That's yeah, pretty good. Eight years old. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. One of the uh, benefits of the marriage that we had yesterday is that uh, Justin McGrath is here with us tonight, and uh, he's a licensed minister now. If you didn't know that, I'd like him to come up and just greet you and 
share a thought with you, okay? This guy's a wonderful man of God. Amen. And he is the youth pastor of the church that he's going to. <laughs> Amen. That's a tough act to follow. Um, my Lord, you put me in a tough spot, Pastor. Amen. Amen. It's so great to be here tonight with you. Amen. I love coming to CLC, the church that I grew up in, the church that gave me a strong foundation, and I'm very, very thankful for that. Amen. You know, your, your foundation gets tested when you really have to go and stand on your own. And I can say that what I learned here and the experiences that I had here at Altars, amen, and under the ministry of Pastor Libby and Pastor Sean gave me a foundation that I could stand when I had nothing else to do but stand. And I'm very, very thankful for that tonight. Amen. If we could all stand real quick, we're going to read a, a few scriptures here. Amen. If we could turn to the book of Philippians chapter 3. Starting at verse, we'll start at verse uh, 13. Could we get that in the amplified version, if possible? <laughs> amen. I just want to encourage someone tonight of something that God has, has put in my spirit, amen, for the times that we are living in. And it's a simple thought that says, I press. I press. Amen. So I'm going to go ahead and um, start reading. I know I, I didn't, sorry, Philippians 3, oh, sorry, verse 13, starting at verse 13. And I want to read in the Amplified because it, it brings out um, some great points here. So this was Paul speaking, and he said, I do not consider, brethren, that I have captured and made it my own yet. But one thing I do, it is my one inspiration, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead. I press, someone say I press. I press. I press on toward the goal to win the supreme heavenly prize to which God, Christ Jesus, is calling us upward. Amen. Just like that upward action that Pastor Sean was talking about this morning. Amen. So I wanna to speak to you really quick about I press. Very quickly, I press. Someone say I press. I press. Amen, you may be seated. You know, I love the game of basketball, and I'm not very good at basketball, but I like to watch and I like to play. And there's a strategy in basketball when you get to the fourth quarter and your team is down and the game is on the line. And the coach sometimes will call for what he calls the full court press. That means instead of waiting for the game to come to you and for accepting defeat, the team as one in unity takes the initiative to do a full court press against the opposing opposition. It's not about waiting back and allowing life to happen, but it's taking the initiative to press forward. But what Paul talked about here actually predates any basketball strategy. Because he said, I love how he said it, he said, I don't have it yet, I haven't figured it all out yet, but one thing I do is forgetting those things which are behind and looking ahead, I press towards the mark of that prize to which God is calling me for. Amen. Because more than a basketball game and more than a win and loss column, what we are fighting for, what we are pressing for is actually very important. Amen. What we are pressing for is something that's not physical and it's not temporary, but it's something eternal. Something that Jesus is calling us to. But the enemy wants to make it seem very, very, um, you know, something that is not important. The enemy wants to make it seem like there's something that is just a secondary thing. The enemy wants to distract us with so many things. But, you know, I think about the words of David when he came down to meet his brothers there, amen, on the battlefield. And they were all scared of the challenge that was ahead of him. And he said, is there not a cause? Is there not a cause? And so I would say to you tonight, Christian Life Center, is there not a cause worth pressing for? Is there not a cause worth mustering up the Holy Spirit inside of us to say, no matter what comes my way, I'm going to press towards the mark to which God is calling me towards. Amen. I know that he's spoken to each and every one of us tonight, and he has given us a vision and a dream. And you know what? Where we're actually standing right now, the only way we got here, the only way you got here is through pressing. Just to get into this building is through pressing. 
See, because once you choose to take a stand for God, you're going to face resistance. Just like Pastor said, those who would commit to prayer this week, Connect 15, once we choose to step up and to make a commitment, there's always going to be pressure. But we have to be like the words of Paul says and get that mentality in our heart that says, no matter what, I'm going to press towards the mark of God's high calling. Amen? When I think about those Filipino people who are in the midst of devastation and they had every excuse to say, you know what, I can't make it to service today. But instead, they chose to go in knee deep water and say, you know what, I'm going to keep doing what I know to do. I'm going to keep pressing towards the mark of his high calling. I'm going to lay aside everything else and focus on what's important. Amen. And what is important is that we make our calling and our election sure, that heavenly prize towards which Jesus Christ is calling us. I want to give you guys a really quick um, science lesson. And sorry, I don't have the proper props with me, but um, all around this bottle, there is um, pressure all around this bottle. Because we are in the atmosphere, there's what we call atmospheric pressure all around this bottle. And if I were to take out all of the air and the water that was inside this bottle, you know that this bottle would crumble and, and, and come together and crumble? And that's because the only thing that's keeping this bottle, you know, from staying in its form is that although there is pressure all around the outside of this bottle, inside this bottle, there is other pressure that is pushing against it. All right. And so I'm reminded of a verse in Matthew chapter 11, verse 12. It says the kingdom suffers violence, but the violent taketh by force. So instead of taking a passive approach when the enemy comes in and puts pressure on our lives, it's time for someone to say, you know what, I'm going to meet that pressure with more pressure. When the enemy comes in and he tries to discourage me, he tries to keep me from church, he tries to keep me from my Connect 15, I'm going to say I'm going to put some pressure on the pressure. I'm going to put some pressure on the financial pressure. I'm going to put some pressure on the things that are taking place in my home. I'm going to pray. I'm going to pray more than I've prayed before. I'm going to press towards the mark of the high calling of Jesus Christ. You know what I would say to you parents? You know, one of the things that I knew that God was real is because I saw parents press in our home. They would wake me up early in the morning and I'd still have sleep in my eyes. But I would see my parents on their face before God pressing. And I thought to myself, there must be something so important that would cause them to rise up early enough and to pull me out of bed and to put me on their bedside so that we could all press together. And I said, I need to figure out for myself what that is because I saw the example of what my parents are pressing for. So parents, what I would say to you, if you want your children to press in the home, let them see a mother and a father who's pressing towards the mark of the high calling. If you want your children to take up the challenge, let them see a parent in the home that's not afraid to press. Amen? God is good. God is good. Amen. Amen. We have to, we can't take a, Nate, I need to borrow you for a second. We can't take a passive approach. So many times we are in what we call reaction mode. Come here, I'm not, I'm not going to hurt you, man. We're in reaction mode. When, when life comes up against us and we're not prepared for it and life presses us, we take a few steps back because we weren't expecting it. We weren't ready for it. We weren't you know, expecting that financial pressure to come into our life. Or we weren't expecting that family member to pass away. Or we weren't expecting that pressure on the job to hit us quite like it did. And if we're not careful and if we're not plugged in, we'll allow that external pressure to make us crumble. But you know what the Bible says? The Bible says, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. You see, God placed something down inside of us that will allow us to have the power to combat the pressure. So don't hurt me, but here's what we're going to do. So that when the enemy comes in and he comes to press, there's something inside of us that presses back against the enemy. When the enemy comes in and tries to move you backwards, there's something that presses against the enemy. When he comes in and says, oh, this thing is too hard, you can't live that life, there's something inside of him that says, I will press towards the mark of the high calling. No matter what, no matter what may be on the outside, I know that greater is he that is within me 
than he that is in the world. You see, we cannot be passive Christians in this time that we live in. We got to be with our mind focused. The Bible says that we should be sober and we should be vigilant. We got to have our minds focused. The Bible says that the spirit is willing, but our flesh is weak. Our flesh can't press like we need to press, but our spirit can. Amen. Amen. You know, the, the thing that makes the full court press work in basketball is that it's not just one person pressing. It's not just one person pressing, but it's the whole team working together in unison towards a specific goal that says, you know what, if my pastor's going to be on the offensive, you know what, I'm going to get behind him and press. If my pastor's going to be out there pressing towards the mark, then I'm going to be behind him. I'm going to get with him. I'm not going to be one of those that kind of stands back and says, well, I hope that works out for him. Man, that's a lot. That's a lot of pressure. That's a lot of pressure. I can't. I don't know. I'm, I, I, I don't know. But if there's some people that will say, you know what? If I see my pastor out there pressing towards the mark, if I see my pastor out there willing to commit, to, to strain towards something, amen. I remember in one of his tweets that he said, because I don't get to see him often, so I, I do read his tweets on Twitter, and he said he doesn't want to just look at the promised land, but he wants to enter into the promised land. You know what he's saying? He's saying he's willing to press towards the mark that which God has given him a vision to call us to. And yes, this is a great, great facility that you are here in now. And it took pressing. I know it took pressing for you guys to get here. But this is not the end. You know, when the children of Israel, when they defeated Jericho and they were, had their feet in the promised land, they had to continue to press to drive the enemy out in every direction. They had to continue to press. And so you know what? I don't want to see my pastor on the battlefield out there pressing by himself, but I want to be able to get behind him and say, you know what, pastor? If you're going to press, I'm going to press. Because if one can put 1,000 to flight, then there's two that can put 10,000 to flight. And if there's two that can put 10,000 to flight, I wonder if there, everyone in the building could get behind him and start pressing not just on a Sunday or a Wednesday, but every day in your Connect 15, if you could get out there and start pressing towards the mark. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We got to have that deep down discernment that I'm going to press towards the mark of his high calling. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. God is so good. God is so good. Amen. Bear with me for one moment. Praise God. You see, in order to press towards the mark, we need to be filled with the Holy Ghost. Not just have the Holy Ghost, but to be full of the Holy Ghost. To have that spirit filled and running out of us. Amen. And so in order to press towards the mark, it takes endurance. When you see those basketball players out there in full court press, they're exerting a lot of energy and they're going to get weary. But you know what the Bible says is that when we choose to press, when we choose to do things for his kingdom, the Bible says, be not weary in well-doing for in due season we will reap if we faint not. But guess what? The power that we need for endurance doesn't come from inside of us, but it comes from Him. It comes from the Most High. It's all about getting back to the basics of pressing towards His high calling. Amen. Of allowing the Spirit of God to take control, to take control, to take control. So when pressure comes in from life in all different directions, we have to know that we have to look towards God. We have to keep doing what is right. You know, when I was at Youth Congress, uh, one of the things that David Bernard said that is that 90% of God's will is doing what we already know to do. Is doing what we already know to do is right. And what I would say to you is that tonight, pressing towards the mark of God's high calling, 90% of that is just doing what you already know is right. It's prayer. It's your Connect 15. It's fasting. It's teaching Bible studies. It's sharing God's word 
like that young lady talked about. It's about inviting people in. Because you know what? When that pressure of this life comes in, if you're ready to put pressure on pressure, you know, when, when those bills are due and you're not sure where the money's going to come from, but you'll say, you know what? I'm not going to worry about that, but I'm going to worry about pressing in God's kingdom. When the enemy comes in and tries to discourage us, you know what? We got to keep sowing the seeds of God's goodness into people's life. We got to keep pressing towards the mark. If we keep doing what is right, you know what? We're going to reap where we sow. We're going to reap where we sow. We have to press towards the mark of his high calling. Amen. I just want to encourage someone tonight that we have to press. You know, people get passionate about a lot of things. People in this world get passionate about a lot of things. You see people go to basketball games or football games, and they're out there in, in sub-zero temperatures with their faces painted, and they're cheering their team on. And you know what? It's all for something so very temporary. So very temporary. But tonight, the prize that we are all pressing for, the reason actually that we're here tonight is because there's an upward calling. There's a destiny and there's a place that God wants to bring each of us to. And but we have to be willing to work towards that goal. We have to be willing to work towards that goal. You see, because without pressing towards that goal, like the illustration earlier, we will, without even knowing it, we will fade back. We will fade back. But if we will put pressure on pressure, if we will put force against force, if we'll allow the greater force that lives inside of us to express itself in every aspect of our life, if we'll allow the Holy Spirit to actually work in our lives, you know what we got to do sometimes is we got to stir up the gift. We got to stir up the gift. We have to let that power that God has placed down inside of us express itself against the pressure and against the princes and principalities of the air in which we live in. Because the world is getting darker and darker. Amen. But we have a light that can shine. Amen. So why don't we all stand to our feet right now. And I think it would be good that we start pressing right now. And we just agree together in unity of heart. Amen. Corporately and individually. Amen. There's things that we need to press towards. There's more people that need to receive the Holy Ghost. You have more family members that need to know who Jesus is. You have a destiny that God is calling you to, an upward calling. And tonight, you know what the enemy would like is for us to just sit back and take a, a passive posture towards his kingdom. But I'm wondering in the house tonight if there's someone who's willing to press. I wonder if there's someone who's willing to get behind their leadership and say, you know what, Pastor, we're going to press together. We're going to press towards the mark of his high calling. Right now, could you lift up your voices together in unity? And let's stir up that gift that God has given us. Amen. There's more territory to be taken in this place, Lord Jesus. Lord, you've brought us this far. God, as we've been pressing, you've brought us this far. God, and we know that it's easy to become weary. God, when we trust in the arm of flesh. But tonight we make a declaration that we are going to trust in you. That we are not going to go by our own might or our own power, God. But we're going to go by your spirit, Lord Jesus. And I pray, God, that you would put us in one mind and one accord, God, as we press towards the mark of your high calling. As we press, Lord Jesus, to fulfill your will in our lives and in this church. God, let us not be weary in well-doing, Lord. God, because we know, God, that in that moment, we will reap. In that moment of due season, we will reap if we faint not. God, strengthen someone tonight. Strengthen homes, God. Every home that's represented in the building tonight. God, that needs to press. Every home that's represented. Every person that's represented, God. God, give us the unction. Give us the ability. Give us the determination. Give us the endurance to press towards the mark of your high calling. God, it's worth it. It's worth it. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Amen, 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 amen. One of my... concerns is that we don't enact 
what we need to enact to ultimately win the battle. We have so many distractions. When I get home at night, I'm pooped, and I'm sure you are too. But we cannot afford, we just cannot afford to lose our prayer life. We cannot afford it. Could you get me a scripture and let me know when you, when you got it? He used it. What's the chapter here, son? Matthew 11, verse 12. And what we're going to do in just a minute, we're going to pray again. The choir is going to sing, and we're going to go home. Thank you, Justin, wherever you are, for speaking the word of God. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. And if you would, just remain standing, get your Bibles out. We're going to have to do it the old-fashioned way. There's nothing wrong with it. Chapter 11 of 11, verse 12. Chapter 11, verse 12 in the book of Matthew. You know, another thing, another thing, and it's something that Sean and I can't talk about too much. But I long for it. And I think he probably does too. And it's very embarrassing to talk about it. But we really do need your help. We have ladies in the nursery that have been in it since we got in the building. We need some help there. But mainly that cooperative push of us all doing it together. And that sense of feeling like we're all on the same team. It is so powerful that the enemy wants to bring brokenness to that. So here we go. Have you looked this up in the in the Amplified? Is it worth looking at? Is it? Okay, can you get me that? Is that the one we made into the Amplified earlier when you were speaking? No. Can you get me that on the Amplified? Pretty please. Well, here we go. And from, this is the King James. Well, here we go. And from the days of John the Baptist until the present time, the kingdom of heaven has endured violent assault. And violent men seize it by force as a precious prize. A share in the heavenly kingdoms is sought with most ardent zeal and intense Exertion. Wow. So the enemy is constantly putting pressure and assault and violence. Yet the kingdom is going to press more so that they can seize it by force. A precious prize. And so what we're talking about, Connect 15, and we need to all fast at least one day, is press. One of the big problems, and you can put this in your notes, the one big problem that we have with what you preach is that we're lazy. It's hard work to intercede 
and to press toward the mark. It's not easy. It's much easier to drink a Diet Coke. But if we lose our pray, prayer power, we built this building in vain. And if we yield or give into that pressure, and now I want Isaiah 60. If we yield to the pressure because it's just too much work, we're going to lose our family. I don't want this little girl to lose anything that she's already got, eight years old. I don't want you to be the same thing that you are now, one year from now. And I don't want myself to be the same one year from now. And that comes with pressing. It's hard work. But if you get into it, rather than just sort of dabble, but get into it and give yourself to it, the rewards are, well, it says, a precious prize. But there must be, look at the last line, a zeal and intense exertion. Can we wrap our brains around that, our spirit around that? One more verse, Isaiah, you got that? 60? Yes, no? Chapter 1, or verse 1. No, Isaiah 60, 6 zero. And put this in your notes, too. Please, okay. To the church, to the church, rise and shine. That's what we're talking about. The enemy wants to put pressure and be in control. God says, arise and shine. That means that's what happens when you press. This is all, brother, Justin's fault. But I'm taking this time here. Blame me. Why should you rise and shine? For thy light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. He's telling them, don't miss this opportunity to rise and, and shine. Don't let it slip away from you. Get your prayer life back. And take it to another level. Notice this next verse. This is what you want to put on your notes. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth and gross darkness the people. This word gross darkness, as I've taught you before, is like a lowering sky, atmospheric pressure, pressure. Somebody that could get me a verse that talks about how Satan knows his time is short and he cometh down with great wrath. Can somebody find that for me? I know numbers of you have concordances in your devices. Behold, the darkness shall cover the earth. And is our darkness, is in our world getting darker and darker and darker? Somebody say amen if you believe that. Revelation 12 and 12. Thank you. And this lowering sky, a pressing gross darkness, Therefore rejoice, ye heavens. That was 1212. Is that right? And ye that dwell in them, 
Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the seal or of the sea. And for the devil is come down unto you having great wrath because he knoweth that he, it's all fuzzy to me, I'm sorry, knoweth that he hath but a short time. We are there. We are not going to go there. We are there. There's a pressing. Oh, this is, I'm just filled with uh, urgency. It's frustrating that Satan is that gross darkness. And that's why there's killings every week because people are snapping under the stress and some of the power. It's, it's why families are breaking up and stuff has happened because of stress, the jobs, the insurance scandal that we are dealing with right now. And this, all this stuff, it's pressure and he's coming down. I don't want you to misunderstand this. I'm not a proponent of movies or TV. But have you ever seen a movie? Just tell me. I don't know. <laughs> that the bad guy, it's at the end of the story, and he just comes out knowing he's going to get killed. All the good guys are out there aiming at him, and he just jumps out and starts shooting everybody, and he knows he's going to die. But he wants to kill as many people as he can. That's exactly what Satan is doing right now. He knows he's going to die. He knows he's not going to win. But he wants to wreak as much havoc as he possibly can before he's totally defeated. And we need a, we need a militant spirit. Oh, I wish somebody would shout amen to that. We need a militant spirit. But the enemy is lowering and lowering to try to make you passive and weak and impotent. But we're not impotent. We have a name which is above every name is name. Get ready, Monique, please. A name which is the highest name. And when you speak that name, children, listen to me. When it, you feel tired and you feel exhausted and I can't do it, just start calling on the name of Jesus. He will revive, revive you. He will revitalize you. Don't stay off the firing line. Get your prayer back. Put your prayer back on and get to our knees and let's seek God together. Let's give God high praise right now. Somebody get angry right now. Somebody get with it right now. In the name of Jesus. Yes. Amen, 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 amen. Come on, Brother Griffin, lead us. You know how to do it. Come on, somebody get with Brother Griffin right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
I want every one of us as one body. Brother Carlos, you've been with us three, three, four weeks. This is you too, because you're here and you're a good wife. What I like is everybody. You see, the, the give it your shout one more time, Brother Griffin. You see, it's not about the volume. It's about the intensity. And when you get intense, you just might make some noise. So I'd like everybody that's willing to give yourself to war, war, spiritual warfare this week. Everybody that's willing to do your Connect 15. Everybody that's willing to give yourself to it. Come on down here as quick as you can. We'll just do it for a few minutes. Give yourself to the Lord. Give yourself to the Lord. Give yourself. Give yourself. Give yourself. Give yourself. Let's cry out. Come on, choir. We need you to pray now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Matthew 11, Matthew 11, verse 12. Jesus name. Now we got to press. There's resistance. Anytime you feel that resistance, that's when you really need to press. Don't get up. Don't get lazy. Don't quit. Press. Get out of our home. Don't get lazy. Don't get lazy. Let's work our muscles. Let's work our muscles. Let's work our spiritual muscles. a little more. Let's press a little more. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. 
We push you back. We press you back. We've been doing it for five minutes. Can we keep pressing? Can we keep pressing? Young people, help us out. Young people, help us out. New converts, help us out. Choir, help us out. Everybody, give it your best. brother and sister now pray with your brother and sister stay in it stay in it put your hand on somebody's shoulder let's keep it tense let's keep it tense amplified please amplified please in Jesus name pay attention please in the name of Jesus That's right. Pray one for another. In Jesus' name. fall on our knees. Let's fall on our knees before God. Give me some volume here. Let's fall on our knees. Let's fall on our knees. Let's everybody get on your knees. Everybody get on your knees. Before the King. Before the King. Musicians, why don't you stop and keep you pray with us? We want you to get the benefit too. 
Let's keep praying. Let's keep praying. Oh, Lobo Hokoshataya. Oh, Ratakia Mahaya, Bahaya Mahasata. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Oh, Lobo. Come on, brethren. We need the men to stand up. We need men, mighty men, the mighty men. In the name of Jesus, warriors, warriors. Oh, 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 give us a breakthrough, God. Give us a breakthrough, God. Draw people, draw people unto you, Lord. Draw people unto you, oh God. Oh God, we've got to save, to reach, to touch, to disciple. Oh Give him praise of tongues. Go into tongues with praise right now. Refresh. Refresh yourself. Just praise him right now. I love you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, let's move back into it now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, I come against the principalities and the powers in this Imesville area, in Damascus. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. O Rotokoshatai, O Tataya Mahakasai. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Clarksburg, we come against the prince and the power of Clarksburg. Lord, crack into crack. Clarksville or Clarks Town. What is it? In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Oh God, the souls that are in Clarksburg, God. Oh God. Finance some mailings in there, Lord, that we could communicate on some level. Help us, God. Help us, God, to reach the lost. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Oh, we pray over Urbana, God. Oh, crack Urbana open. In the name of the Lord. Set the captives free. Set the captives free. Oh God. <laughs> oh. 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 Oh, God, oh, God. In the name of Jesus. In 
the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Show, bring Cody home, God. Bring Cody home in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Let's all pray together over Hagerstown. In the name of Jesus. Let's take authority over Hagerstown for our church up there. In the name of Jesus. We take authority in the name of the Lord Jesus. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Come on, somebody. Keep stirring it up. Stir it up. Stir it up. Stir it up. Amen. Let's be not weary in well-doing. Be not weary in well-doing. We press against the prince of the power of the air in Hagerstown. In the name of Jesus, we bind the prince in the name of Jesus and every demon that's up there. In the name of Jesus, we take authority over Urbana. In the name of Jesus, we command the enemy to break. We cast you out. In the name of Jesus, we bind your power. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. We pray over Clarksburg. We take authority over Clarksburg. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Oh, it's work, it's work, but it's worth it. It's what God is calling us to do. Oh. In the name of Jesus, 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 Help her dig out a prayer life in the name of the Lord as she moves toward your guidance. And as you bring her up, Lord, make her a mighty woman of God. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Oh, Jesus, 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 Jesus.
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. In la barba to push to tolo lo 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hadaba hakasha talaba haya hakasha. Iya iya hakasha talaba haya hakasha. Iya iya Parents, pray for your children. Call their names out. Call their names out. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hukotolo mohushaya bahaka. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Jesus knows all about my trouble. Hallelujah. 